Hi everyone, welcome to Maker's Mind. This is a tutorial video of a simple cricket bowling machine. I made this machine as an experimental model last year and uploaded it to YouTube Shorts. Lately this short became so popular and many viewers requested me to make a detailed instructional video. So I have created this tutorial video so that you can also make one for yourself. I hope you will like this video. Please watch until the end without skipping. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please do so. For the two bowling wheels of the machine, I am using two wheels from an old hoverboard. Hoverboard wheel is also called hub motor or brushless DC motor. The width of the wheel is 6.5 inch and the rubber tire width is 1.5 inch. And the motor rated as 36 volt to 42 volt DC voltage and of 250 watts of power. It has three wires named as blue, green, yellow and it also comes with a hall sensing cable but for this project we are not going to use it. Now let's talk about the motor controllers. We need two speed controllers for the two wheels. I am using two PWM DC brushless electric motor speed controllers. Each can handle 300 watt of output power. Do not connect two motors to one controller. It may damage the hub motor. For your understanding, I am showing the picture of the controller with different connector slots. The highlighted three slots are for the three motor phase wires. Keep in mind, the hall sensor cable is unused in this project. Below two highlighted slots are for input DC power supply. Only DC is allowed here and do not use more than 42 volt. This controller board has an onboard potentiometer which can control the speed of the hub motor but you can also connect an external potentiometer to these highlighted slots. Remember to turn the onboard potentiometer knob to zero when you are controlling from an external potentiometer. There are some extra slots for the rotation direction control along with an electronic brake but in this project we are not going to use them. The final part of the controller is the heat sink which is used to keep the controller circuit safe from overheating. Let's talk how two wheels can throw a ball in the air. If you place a ball whose diameter is slightly bigger than the gap between two wheels which are being rotated in the opposite directions to each other, then those wheels will apply a force on the ball and the ball will start to slide and finally be released in the air. As we increase the speed of the wheels, the faster the ball can be thrown. For this machine, I have adjusted the space between two wheels to fit only tennis or synthetic rubber balls. To do that, I first measured the diameter of the ball and then kept the gap between two wheels slightly less than that diameter. You can always keep some more space between two wheels so that you can fit other types of balls like season ball, leather ball or hard synthetic balls. For this machine, I have taken a piece of wood and mounted the wheels on one side of it. You may want to choose metal bar, but I used wood because making mounting holes on wood is much easier than on a metal bar. To mount the wheels, I am using the same mounting brackets which I have taken from the hoverboard. I will be fast forwarding next few minutes of this video as I will be simply mounting these two wheels. You may want to skip to the next chapter where I will be installing the motor controllers.
Now we are going to attach the controller with the hub motor. In this setup, I am using one controller for one hub motor. For flexible connection, I am using extension cable for motor phase wires. The hub motor has three phase wires with color coded as blue, green and yellow. Each phase wire will be connected to the controller's onboard motor phase terminal. To supply power to both controllers, I am using this type of connectors which will connect both the controllers to a 42 volt DC power source. We can insert any motor phase wire to any of the motor phase terminal socket on the controller board. Once everything is connected, we can connect a 42 volt DC power to the controller. For testing purpose, I am using an external variable DC power source. Later I will be using a 42 volt lithium battery pack which I have taken from the same hover board. Now let's power it up to see if the wheels are spinning. Yes, wheels are spinning nicely and responding well when we are increasing the input voltage. But there is a problem and the problem is both wheels are spinning in the same direction. However, to throw the ball, one of the wheel needs to rotate in the opposite direction to the other. The funny part with the hub motor is we can change the direction of the rotation just by swapping the phase wires. After I swapped phase wires on one of the hub motor, let's see if they work as per the expectation. Yes. They are working well, they are spinning in the opposite direction to each other. Ok, now I have connected the 42 volt lithium battery pack and mounted each controller on the same wood exactly below the wheels. And I also added support system to the wood bar so that entire system sits well on a plane surface. Now we are going to build an automatic ball feeding system which will dispense one ball at a time and should be able to hold five to six balls in the dispenser. To build that system, we will be using a PVC tube roughly about 12 to 18 inch long with a diameter slightly bigger than the type of the cricket ball that we are using. This PVC tube then be mounted in the center of those two bowling wheels and attach one side to the wooden bar at an angle roughly 30 to 45 degree and the other end will keep open to insert the cricket balls. We need to test how it is working before we work on the automated feeding system. So let's see how it works. For automating the ball dispensing mechanism, I am going to use a 5 volt 9 gram servo motor in front of the PVC tube and attach the servo arm at an angle of 90 degree to downward direction. In this position, the servo arm will be stopping all the balls in the PVC tube from rolling towards the bowling wheels. To dispense one ball, I need the servo motor arm to make a quick turn to 0 degree and in this moment, the first ball starts to roll downwards to the bowling wheel and eventually it will be thrown by the bowling wheels. Now the servo motor arm needs to make another quick turn to go back to its original 90 degree position to stop the next ball from rolling downwards. So if I can repeat the above steps in an interval then this will be an automatic ball dispensing system. To control the servo motor, I will be programming an Arduino development board. The programming part is relatively easy than all the other setup, so I am not going to go over to the programming part at this moment. However, I have my GitHub link uh, given in the video description where I have kept all my code and helpful other links. So please feel free to use them. Now the setup is completed and it is time to check how the machine is working. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share this video with your friends and families. 
Please do not forget to subscribe my channel Makers Mind. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.